from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Global Partner Network. Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE, virtual coverage of reInvent 2020 virtual. Normally we're in person this year because of the pandemic, we're doing remote interviews mm -hmm. and we've got a great uh, coverage here of the AP and Amazon partner network experience. I'm your host, John Furrier. We are theCUBE virtual. Got a great guest from Tel Aviv, co co remotely calling in and videoing in Nimrod Vax, who's the chief product officer and co-founder of Big ID. Um, this is the beautiful thing about remote. You're in Tel Aviv, I'm in Palo Alto. Great to see you. We're not in person, but thanks for coming on. Thank you. Great to see you as well. So you guys have had a lot of success with Big ID. I've noticed a lot of awards, startup to watch, company to watch. Um, kind of a good market opportunity, data, data at scale, identification. Uh, as the web evolves beyond web presence, identification, authentication is super important. You guys are called Big ID. Um, What's the purpose of the company? Why do you exist? What's the value proposition? So first of all, best startup uh, to work with, uh, work at uh, based on Glassdoor worldwide. So that's a big achievement too. Um, so look, four, we, four years ago, we started Big ID when we uh, realized that there is a gap in the market between uh, the new demands um, or, uh, from organizations in terms of how to protect their personal and sensitive information that they collect about their customers, their employees. Uh, the regulations were becoming more strict, but the tools that were out there and to the large extent still out there were not providing um, to those requirements and, and organizations had to deal with some of those uh, uh, challenges in manual processes, right? For example, the right to be forgotten, organizations need to be able to uh, find and delete a person's data if they want to be deleted. That's based on GDPR and later on even CCPA. And, um, and uh, organizations had no way of doing it because the tools that were available uh, could not tell them whose data it is that they found. Um, the tools were very siloed. They were looking at either unstructured data in file shares or, or windows uh, and, and, and so forth, or they were looking at databases. There was nothing for big data. There was nothing for cloud business applications. And so we identified that there was a gap here and we addressed it uh, by, by building big ID basically uh, to address those, uh, those challenges. That's great, great stuff. And I remember four years ago when I was banging on the table and saying, you know, regulation can stunt innovation because you had the confluence of massive platform shifts combined with the business pressure from society. That's not stopping, it's continuing today. You're seeing it globally, uh, whether it's fake news in journalism to privacy concerns for modern applications, this is not going away. You guys have a great market opportunity. Um, what is the product? What is small ID? What do you guys got right now? How do customers maintain yeah. the success as the ground continues to shift under them, as platforms become more prevalent, more tools, more platforms, more everything? So, so I'll start with big ID. What is big ID? So big ID really helps organizations better manage and protect the data that they own. And it does that by connecting to everything you have around structured databases and unstructured uh, file shares big data, cloud storage, business applications, and then providing very deep insight into that data. Cataloging all the data so you know what data you have where and uh, uh, classifying it so you know what type of data you have. Um, cluster analyzing the data to find similar and duplicate data and then correlating that to, to an identity. Very strong, very broad solution. Uh, fit for uh, IT organizations. We have some of the largest organizations out there, the biggest retailers, the biggest financial services organizations, manufacturing, uh, and, et cetera. Um, and what we are seeing is that there are, um, with the adoption of cloud and with the success obviously of AWS, uh, that uh, there are a lot of organizations that are not as big, that don't have an IT organization, that have a very, well uh, functioning DevOps organization that, but still have a very big footprint in, uh, in Amazon and um, uh, in, in um, uh, other um, kind of uh, cloud services. And they want to get visibility and they want to do it quickly. Um, and uh, big ID is really, uh, small ID is really built for that. Small ID is uh, a lightweight version of big ID that is cloud native built for your AWS environment. Uh, and what it means is that you can quickly install it using a CloudFormation template straight from the um, uh, AWS marketplace, 
quickly stand up an environment that can scan, uh, discover your assets in your uh, account automatically and give you immediate visibility into that, uh, your S3 bucket, into your DynamoDB environments, into your EMR clusters, into your Athena uh, databases, um, uh, and uh, building immediately building a full catalog of all the data. So you know what files you have, where uh, you know uh, what tables, what met technical metadata, operational metadata, business metadata, and also classify that information. So you know where you have sensitive information um, and you can immediately uh, address that and apply controls to, to, the, to that information. So this is data discovery. So the use case is I'm an Amazon partner. I mean, we use the cube virtuals on Amazon, but let's just say hypothetically we're growing like crazy. Got S3 buckets over here, secure and encrypted and rest and all that stuff. Things are happening. We're growing like a weed. Do we just deploy small ID? Is that how it works? Is that use cases, small ideas for AWS and big ideas for everything else or? So small ID is uh, you could start small with the small ID. Uh, you get you get the visibility you need. You you, uh, you can leverage the automation uh, of AWS so that you automatically discover those data sources, connect to them, and get visibility. Uh, and you could grow into big ID using the same deployment inside AWS. You don't have to switch, migrate. Uh, you use the same um, uh, container uh, cluster uh, that is running uh, um, inside your account. Uh, automatically scale it up and then connect to other systems or uh, uh, benefit from the more advanced capabilities that big ID can offer, such as correlation, such as by connecting to maybe your, your Salesforce CRM system and, and getting uh, you know uh, the ability to correlate to your customer data and understand also whose data it is that you're storing. Um, uh, connecting to your on-premise on mainframe with, uh, with the same deployment, connecting to your Google Drive or Office 365. So, um, but, the, but the point is that with the small ID, you can really start quickly, small with a very small team and get that visibility very quickly. Nimra, I want to ask you a question. What is the definition of cloud native data discovery? What does that mean to you? So cloud native means that it, mean, that it leverages all the benefits of, uh, of the cloud, right? It gets all of the um, automation and um, visibility that you get in a cloud environment uh, versus an on, a traditional on-prem environment. So for uh, one thing is that a uh, big idea is installed directly from your uh, marketplace. So you could browse, find this solution on the AWS marketplace and, and purchase it. It gets deployed using cloud formation templates very easily, very quickly. Um, it runs on a um, on a uh, elastic container service, um, so that once it runs, you can uh, automatically scale it up and down to increase the uh, uh, the scan um, and the scale um, uh, capabilities of, of the solution. It connects automatically um, uh, behind the scenes into um, uh, the, um, uh, the the security hub of AWS. So you get those alerts, the policy alerts, uh, fed into your. Uh, uh, your your security hub. It has integration also directly into um, the, the native logging capabilities of AWS. So your existing Datadog or whatever you're using for monitoring can plug into it uh, automatically. That's what we mean by by cloud native. And if you know if you're cloud native, you got to be positioned to take advantage of the data, machine learning in particular. Um, can you expand on? the role of machine learning in your solution. Customers are leaning in heavily this year. You're seeing more uptake on machine learning, which is basically AI. AI is machine learning, but it's all tied together. ML is big on, on all the deployments. Can you share your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So data discovery is a very tough problem. Um, and it has been around for 20 years. Uh, and the traditional methods of, uh, of classifying the data or understanding what type of data you have has been uh, you looking at the pattern of the data typically regular expressions or, or types of kind of uh, pattern matching uh, techniques that look at the data. But sometimes in order to know what is uh, personal or what is sensitive, it's not enough to uh, look at the pattern of the data. Um, how do you distinguish between a date of birth and, uh, and, and any other de uh, date? Date of birth is much more sensitive. Uh, how do you find country of residency or how do you identify uh, a, even a, a first name from a last name. So for that, uh, you need more advanced, more sophisticated um, uh, capabilities that go beyond just, uh, just pattern matching. Um, and Big ID has a variety of those techniques. We call that discovery in depth. 
Um, it, what it means is that uh, very similar to security in depth where you cannot rely on a sing single security uh, control uh, to protect your environment, you cannot rely on a single discovery method to truly classify the data. So yes, we have regular expression that the tables take basic uh, capability of data classification, but if you want to find data that is more contextual, like a first name, last name, even a phone number, and distinguish between a phone number and just a sequence of numbers, uh, you need more contextual NLP-based discovery named entity recognition we're using to, to extract and find data uh, contextually. We also apply uh, deep learning, uh, CNN, it's called CNN, which uh, is basically deep learning in order to identify uh, and classify uh, document types, it, uh, which is basically being able to distinguish between a resume and a uh, application form. Uh, finding uh, financial records, finding medical records. Um, so our, uh, our advanced uh, NLP classifiers can, can find that type of data. The more advanced capabilities that go beyond the small ID into big ID also include cluster analysis, which, which is an unsupervised machine learning method of finding duplicate and similar data. Uh, correlation uh, uh, and, and other techniques that are more yeah. uh, contextual and, and, and need to use machine learning for that. Yeah, and unsupervised obviously a lot harder than supervised. You need to have that um, ability to get that, what you can't see. You got to get the blind spots identified and that's really the key observational data you need. This brings up the kind of operational, you heard cluster, I hear governance, security you mentioned earlier, GDPR. This is an operational impact. Um, can you talk about how it impacts on specifically on the privacy protection and governance side? Because, you know, certainly I get the clustering side of it operationally, it's great. Everyone needs to get that. But now on the business model side, this is where people are spending a lot of time scared and worried actually, you know, what the hell to do. Yeah, like, there are, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the things that we realized very early on when we started with the big idea is that everybody needs discovery. Um, you need discovery um, and we actually started with privacy. You need discovery in order to map your data and apply the security, the privacy controls. Uh, you need the discovery for security, like we said, right? Find it and identify sensitive data and apply controls. Um, and you also need discovery for data enablement. You want to discover the data in order to enable it, to govern it, to make it accessible to the other um, parts of your business. So discovery is really a foundation, a starting point uh, that you get uh, with, with small ID. How does it, how do you operationalize that? So big ID has the concept of, a, uh, of an uh, application framework. Um, um, think about it like uh, like an Apple store for data discovery, where you can run applications inside your uh, kind of discovery iPhone in order to run specific uh, use cases. Um, so uh, how do you operationalize uh, privacy use cases? We have applications for privacy use cases like uh, subject access requests and, and, and data rights fulfillment, right? Under the CCPA, you have the right to request um, uh, your data, what data is being stored about you. Big ID can help you uh, find all that data um, in, in, in the catalog that uh, after we scan and we find that information, we can find any individual data. We have an application also in the, in the, in the privacy space for consent governance, right? Under CCPA, you have the right to opt out. Um, if you opt out, your data cannot be sold, cannot be used. Um, how do you enforce that? How do you make sure that if someone opted out, that person's data is not being uh, pumped into glue into some other system for analytics into uh, um, uh, Redshift or, or Snowflake. Big ID can identify a specific person's data and make sure that it's not being used for analytics and uh, alert if there is a, a violation. So that's just an example of how you operationalize this knowledge uh, for privacy. And we have more examples also for data enablement and, and uh, data management. There's so much headroom opportunity to build out new functionality, make it programmable. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. Totally needed in the industry. Um, I can just see endless opportunities to make this operationally scalable, more programmable, once you kind of get the foundation out there. So congratulations, Nimrod and the whole team. Um, question I want to ask you, we're here at reInvent, it's virtual. Three weeks, we're here covering Cube Action. Uh, check out the Cube Experience Zone, the partner experience. What is the difference between Big ID and say Amazon's, Macy? I mean, um, let's think about that. So how do you compare and contrast? Um, and Amazon yeah. is, they say we love partnering, with, but we promote our ecosystem. You guys are, have a similar thing. What's the difference? There's, there's a big difference. Yes, there is some overlap because both uh, Small ID and, and Macy uh, can classify data in S3 buckets. 
Um, and and uh, and Macy does a you know pretty good uh, job at it, right? I'm not uh, arguing about it. Uh, but small ID is uh, is slightly different. It's not only about scanning for um, sensitive data in S3. Um, it also scans anything else you have in your AWS environment, like DynamoDB, like EMR, like Athena. We're also adding Redshift soon, Glue, and other uh, data sources as well. Uh, and it's not only about identifying and alerting on sensitive data, it's about building a full catalog of data. It's about giving you almost like a phone registry of your data in AWS, where you can look up any type of data and see where it's found across structured, unstructured, big data repositories that you're handling inside your uh, AWS environment. So it's broader than just for security. Um, apart from the fact that it can be used for privacy, I would say the biggest value of it is by building that catalog and making it a, a accessible for data enablement, enabling your data across the board for other use cases, for analytics in, in Redshift, for, uh, uh, for uh, Glue, uh, for data integrations, for various other purposes. Uh, we have also integration into um, uh, Kinesis to be able to scan and, uh, and let you know which topics uh, uh, use what type of data. Um, so it's really a full, very, very robust, full-blown catalog of the data that uh, across the board that is dynamic. And uh, also, like you mentioned, accessible through APIs, you know, very much uh, like the, uh, the, the AWS uh, yeah. tradition. Yeah, great stuff. I got to ask you a question while you're here. You're the co-founder and again, congratulations on your success. Also the chief product officer of Big ID. What's your advice to your colleagues and potentially new friends out there that are watching here? Um, and let's take it from the entrepreneurial perspective. You know, I have an application and I start, you know, growing and maybe I have funding, maybe I take a more pragmatic approach versus raising billions of dollars. Um, but as you grow, the pressure for AppSec reviews, having all the table stakes features, how do you advise uh, developers or entrepreneurs or even business people, small, medium sized enterprises to prepare? Is there a way, is there a playbook to say, rather than looking back and saying, oh, I didn't do all the things, I got to go back and retrofit, get big ID. Is there a playbook that you see that will help companies so they don't get killed with AppSec reviews and privacy compliance uh, reviews? And it could be a waste of time. I mean, um, what's your thoughts on well, all this? Well, I think that uh, very early on when we started Big ID and that was our perspective is that we knew that we are um, a, a, a security and privacy company. So we had to take that very seriously upfront. Um, and, uh, and and be prepared. Um, and so uh, we, you know, security cannot be an afterthought. It's something that needs to be built in. And and from day one, uh, we we have taken all of the uh, steps that were needed in order to uh, make sure that what we're building is robust and, and secure. And that includes, you know, um, obviously. Um, uh, applying all of the uh, code and CI/CD uh, tools that are possible, that are available for, uh, you know, testing your code, whether it's Sneak or, or check marks or these type of tools. Uh, applying and, and providing, uh, you know, penetration testing and working with the uh, with the kind of be best in line kind of uh, pen testing um, companies and, and white hat hackers that would look at your code. These are kind of the things that uh, that's what you get funding for, right? Yep. And you need to take uh, take advantage of that and use that. And as, as soon as we got bigger, we uh, we also invested in a very kind of um, uh, a, a very strong CISO that comes from the industry that has a lot of expertise and a lot of credibility. Yep. Uh, we also have uh, you know kind of CISO group. So you know each step of funding we've used extensively also to to uh, make our um, kind of security posture a lot more robust and uh, and visible. Final question for you, when is uh, when should someone buy Big ID? When should they engage? Is it something that people can just download immediately and integrate? Do you have to have, uh, is the go-to-market kind of, and you target the VP level or is it the, you know, how do you, how does someone get in, know when to buy you and download it and use the software? Take us through the, the use case of how customers engage with. Yeah, uh, so customers, uh, so, you know, customers typically have those, um, uh, requirements when they start uh, hitting um, and having to comply with regulations around um, privacy and uh, security. So very early on, especially organizations that uh, deal with the consumer information, uh, get to a point where they uh, need to be accountable for the data that they store. 
about their customers and they want to be able to know their data and, uh, and, uh, and provide the privacy control they need to their consumers. Um, for, uh, for, for our big ID product, this typically is a kind of a medium size and up company uh, with an IT organization. For small ID, um, this, is, this is a good fit for um, companies that are much smaller that uh, operate mostly out of their, uh, their IT is basically their DevOps teams. Um, and uh, once they have more than um, 10, 20 data sources in AWS, that's where they start losing a, a count of the data that they have and they need to get more visibility um, and be able to control what uh, uh, data is being stored there because very quickly you start losing uh, a, a count of that uh, information. Even for an organization like Big ID, which isn't a big organization, right? We are 200 employees. Um, we are at a point where uh, you know it's hard to keep track and uh, keep control <laughs> of all the data that is being stored in all of the different data sources, right? In AWS, in, in Google Drive, in some of our other systems, right? And that's the point where you need to have start thinking about having that visibility. You know, you all growth plans start big, dream big, start small, and get big. And I think that's a yeah. nice pathway. So small gets you going, and you lead right into the big ID. Great stuff. Final, final question for you while I got you here. Why the awards? Um, someone's like, hey, big ID, this is a cool company. Uh, love the founder, love the team, love the value proposition, makes a lot of sense. Why all the awards? Look, I think uh, one of the things that was compelling about big ID from the beginning is that we did things differently. Um, our whole, whole approach for data for personal data discovery is uh, is unique. It, instead of looking at the data, we we started by looking at the identities, the people, uh, and finally looking at their data, learning how their data looks like, and then searching for that information. So that was a very different approach to the traditional approach of uh, data discovery, and we continue to uh, to innovate and to uh, look at uh, those problems in a different from a different perspective, so we can offer our customers an alternative to what was done um, in the past. It's not saying that we don't do uh, the, the basic stuff, the regexes, the, the um, connectivity that, uh, that is needed, but we always uh, took a slightly different approach uh, to diversify, to offer something uh, slightly different and more comprehensive. Uh, and I think that was the, the thing that really attracted us, you know, from the, the beginning with the uh, RSA Innovation Sandbox Award. Uh, that we won in, in, in 2018, the, the, the Gartner uh, Cool Vendor Award that we received. Um, and, and later on also uh, the, the, the other awards. And I think that's, that's the, the unique aspect of, uh, of Big ID. You know, you solve big problems and certainly it's needed. You know, we saw this early on. And again, I don't think the, the problem's going to go away anytime soon. Platforms are emerging, more tools than ever before that converge into platforms. And as the logic changes at the top, all that's moving under the underground. Yeah. So congratulations, great insight. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for coming on the theCUBE, appreciate it Nimrod. Okay, I'm John Furrier. We are the Cube Virtual here for the Partner Experience APN Virtual. Thanks for watching.